Hey everyone, it's Neil Patel, and today is another day of SEO Unlocked. Today, we're gonna to be covering editing. I wanna first start off with this quote from Steve Martin. He's an actor, many of you guys have seen him on television. I don't think anyone is ever writing so that you can throw it away. You're always writing it to be something. In other words, if you wrote something, you're not happy with it, don't worry about it. There's a whole editing process. And it starts with going and finding the right keywords. Because if you're writing content that never ranks, it's gonna be harder for you to get traffic. So head on over to Ubersuggest and type in the keywords that you'll like to rank for. Whatever that keyword is or whatever you wanna write on, put it on there and Ubersuggest will tell you how popular that term is as well as show you ideas. Now I want you to look at a few boxes on this report. The search volume, the higher the number, the better. SEO difficulty, typically when the number is 40 or lower, it's easier to rank for, and that's the keywords that you ideally wanna go after if you're a new website or you haven't done much SEO. If you've been around for a long time and you have bigger SEO budgets, you can go after more and more competitive terms. Then you also wanna look at the pay difficulty. Typically, the higher that number, it means the more likely that keyword is to convert. And of course, you wanna look for the cost per click as well. This is how much money it would cost if you would buy this keyword. The higher the number, typically that also means the more lucrative that keyword is as well. Now that you have idea if the keyword is good or bad, I want you to go to the left-hand navigation of Ubersuggest and click on Keyword Ideas. That'll bring you to a report that gives you more related keywords to the one you just typed in. Look for other terms that are related, and it'll show you if they're good, if they have a high SEO difficulty, a low SEO difficulty, if they're expensive, because the more expensive they are, even though you're not paying for them, it means the more likely they are to convert into customers, right? Those visitors who find you from those terms. Then I want you to go to the content ideas report in the left-hand navigation, click on content ideas, and it'll show you all the other posts that are popular related to that term. It'll give you an idea of what is working based on social share count. The higher the social shares, the more people liked it. You also want to look at the estimated visits and the backlinks column as well. The estimated visits doesn't tell you how many visits that article gets in total. It tells you how many visits that article is getting on a monthly basis from Google specifically. So the higher the number there, the better. And of course, for the backlinks number, the higher the better because it means people are willing to link to it. I also want you to create an outline for your content. We discussed how to create an outline in the previous lesson. If you don't know how, go back. We give you the steps on doing that and follow that to create your own outline. And as you're creating your own outline and filling it in and you're generating your content, right? In essence, you're writing and as you're writing, finish it and then start editing after, but keep those keywords in mind while you're writing. So it's really important before you write, you go to Ubersuggest and do your research every time before you write an article. Remember, you can edit throughout the whole process. You don't have to produce a masterpiece from the first time that you're done writing that article. Because in the previous lessons, we talked about that you also want your article to sit for at least 24 hours before you do anything with it. That gives you time to edit, to really think through, did I do a good job, did I do a poor job, how can I improve it? Most people also write and edit their content in Google Docs, it's free, you should consider it. I love using Microsoft Word, but Google Docs is the free version. And now that you have your content up and running in Google Docs, let's go over the main steps that you need to follow in order to create a masterpiece through editing. So I call it steps, as long as you follow each of them, you'll do well. The first one is you wanna strive for brevity. A lot of people like adding in fluff. They're like, Neil, my competition has 2,500 words. I'm gonna write 3,000 words. And that's great if you feel that you can expand upon it, have 3,000, even five, or even 10,000 words. And if you feel that it provides value to the reader, by all means, do it. But if you're just adding in fluff and wasting people's time, then they're not gonna like you. So try to remove those fuller words that aren't needed, like just, really, perhaps, literally, stuff, things, very, better, always. They don't really provide much value. And funny enough, I just said the word really. 
But think about it, and if you can take these vague words out of there, you'll be better off. You'll also want to delete redundant words. By deleting redundant words, it'll get the point across quicker and people like that. Make sure you also check for spelling and grammar errors. People don't like that and if you're terrible at spelling and grammar, don't worry about it. I am as well. I use a Chrome extension called Grammarly and it makes my life really easy because it corrects my spelling and grammar better than Google does or even better than Microsoft Word does. It's amazing and it's free. Here's an example of a grammar issue that could be fixed. It might rain tomorrow. You don't want to start a sentence with it. And when you get more specific, people love your content much more. Example of cleaning it up is the forecast calls for rain tomorrow. It's more decisive. It's telling them, hey, this is what's going to happen tomorrow based on data. The data is the forecast, right? The weather report. The second step in steps is technical jargon. Who doesn't want to sound smart? The thing that I hate the most, and this is a big pet peeve of mine, I meet a lot of people from these Ivy League colleges and there's nothing wrong with that. Some of my best friends graduated for them. But they love using this technical jargon throughout their content and they feel it makes them sound smart and they're writing for their friend who also went to that Ivy League college that went with them to Harvard. But that's not the average person who's reading your text. So make your text easy to understand. Avoid using technical jargon. Avoid using complex vocabulary that most people don't know. And it's not because it means people are dumb if they don't understand the technical jargon. Remember, those people may know stuff that you don't know, or those people may be an international audience. And businesses these days are global businesses. So you need to make sure that you avoid using lingo that could mean something else in another language or that may not translate well. Another thing I love doing is using the app, Hemingway app. It's a free website app. It'll tell you your, uh, your overall score and your overall goal is to just make your article super readable and easy to understand for anyone. Next thing, you want to ensure your writing flows. If it doesn't flow, who's going to want to read your content? You want your content to flow seamless. That way people are like, oh, this is an amazing experience. If you ever watch a TV show and it's all choppy and hard to understand, what do you think you're going to do? You're going to skip and go to the next TV show or the next movie. The same with your writing. If it's hard to understand, people are going to be like, all right, I'm going back and I'm going to go read some other article around the web. So the easiest way to ensure that your article flows is to check to make sure that you're using subheadings throughout your article. And I love doing this throughout my body as well as I'll map out my conclusion and I'll label it conclusion. So my conclusion summarizes everything in my article, but also use a subheading of conclusion right above it. So that way people know, hey, this is the conclusion. This is also why I push you to create outlines. Because if you create an outline, you can quickly tell before you write your content if things are flowing. If you spend all the time writing first and you don't do the outline, you could end up with a piece that doesn't flow and then you're going to have to spend a lot more time editing and rewriting and you don't want to do that. The next step in steps is pain points. Think about the person reading it. Can you match your persona's story pain points? If you can, you can relate more to them and really hook them in. Does a content supply examples and themes or stories? People relate more to stories than they do just reading sentences. Stories really get the imagination going and storytelling is an age old marketing tactic that's been used for thousands and thousands of years. You also don't want to abuse pain points. You don't want to push it really hard. You need to respect your reader's time and not just being like, ah, you suck because you have these issues. Like be nice and kind when you're covering the pain points as well. The final section is SEO. If your article isn't optimized for Google, how are people going to find it? Did you include the keywords that you found through the Uber suggest tool in a natural way? Did you include them in the title of the article within the body, within the conclusion, within your meta description? And even though you may have a list of 50 or hundred keywords, you don't want to just keep stuffing in those keywords. Is it natural? You don't have to mention a keyword 50 times. You'll naturally mention it if that's what the article is about. And you also want to run the page against your on page checklist, which we've provided, or you can find at neilpatel.com training. If you don't have it, 
Another aspect of SEO that most people don't talk about is user experience. Are people actually reading your content? Where are the readers dropping off? How can you improve that experience? Through Crazy Egg, you can create a heat map, which will show you how people are interacting with your webpage. And here's the example. This is a live heat map. People could be scrolling, they're reading, and as they're reading and scrolling, then what's from there, I can show, hey, this is what people are reading. Here's what they're not reading. Here are the pages that need to be improved. So now what I want you to do is go to neilpatel.com slash training or beneath this video if you're already there. I want you to download your editing checklist. I want you to edit your draft article with the checklist. And then I want you to set up a heat map with Crazy Egg. So that way when you publish your content, you can see how people are reading and engaging with your content because it'll show you where the drop off is so you can continually improve and tweak your content. I look forward to helping you grow your traffic through SEO and content marketing.